Good morning. Good morning. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, welcome to this time of worship as we celebrate Christ on this first Sunday of Advent. As you see, we're decorated for Search for the Christ Child. It was a tremendous time last night. We had 243 visitors come through the church yesterday. We'll be doing it again tonight from 5.30 to 8. We will need help, though, about 8, 5, 8 o'clock, 8.15, uh, help tearing down the steps and everything. So if you'd like to come and, and help us um, uh, take down all the search for, for the Christ child stuff. And also 6 o'clock Monday evening, we might need some help too. So if you have uh, time there. Uh, a couple other announcements. There's a giving tree on the bulletin board in the hallway. And on it are ornaments that have specific toys and, and uh, clothes and all that kind of thing. That's going to families at community care. And so if you take an ornament, uh, please purchase that uh, gift and bring it back unwrapped. Uh, we should need that by next Sunday um, so we can get things uh, wrapped and everything in the community care. So please note those. Also, next Sunday evening at 6 o'clock, we're going to go caroling as a congregation. If you'd like to carol, uh, even if you can't sing, come and join us. It would be a hoot. We uh, going to visit some of the, the people in our church and some other folks in the communities. So uh, uh, we're going to meet here at 6 o'clock. And depending upon how many we have, we're going to go out and uh, spread, the, spread the cheer around, around town here a little bit. Uh, I don't think we have anything else. So let's, oh, uh, the lighting of the Advent wreath. Advent's the season in which we prepare for the coming of the Christ child, the King of Kings, our Savior. Surely all good things in life require preparation, and God in his mercy has given us the gift of time to prepare for his arrival, which no doubt will be the most important event we ever experience. Take time this week to reflect on the joy of Jesus' first arrival, and then confident in his love for you, ask God to reveal to you the ways in which you need to prepare your heart to meet him on Christmas Day. This morning as we as we stand and sing, let's be, uh, let's be mindful that this is, like I said last week, it's the beginning of a worldwide birthday party, a worldwide celebration, and uh, let's go for it. You know, can somebody say go for it? Go, go for, for it. it. <laughs> All right, come on, stand up, we'll do some singing. If your legs need you to sit back down, that's just fine too. 
Let's sing, sing, sing. No restrictions. You don't have to just say to someone near you anywhere you want to say hi. Good morning. Good morning again. Yeah, that's about it. Oh, no. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning again. Good morning. Good morning, Jeff. Hi, Ms. Jeff. Hi, Jeff. Good morning, 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 Jeff.
glad you're here this morning. Son of man, we love you, Jesus. Blessed be your name. Amen. You can be seated. The first Bible reading today comes from Jeremiah, chapter 33, verses 14 through 16. The days are coming, declares the Lord when I will fulfill the gracious promise I made to the house of Israel and to the house of Judah. In these days, 
and at that time I will make a righteous branch sprout from David's line. He will do what is just and right in the land. In those days, Judah will be saved, and Jerusalem will live in safety. This is the name by which it will be called, the Lord our righteousness. So hear the word of the Lord.
Paul speaks of Christ in you, the hope of glory. He speaks of how the Lord dwells in us as we receive him. And this morning, a friend of mine had a post, and he pointed out that God, that you are God's location on earth. What an awesome thought. We know he's sovereign. We know he's the, the God of heaven and earth and the entire universe. But when he lives in our heart, we are his location on earth. I can't get my head around it, but it's an amazing thing. Amazing thing. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Father, as we move forward in this service, we would ask that you would touch the pastor's mind and heart and speak to us through him. We ask that you would, uh, I guess, do your business in each of our hearts today. Help us to hear what you have for us. Help us to be who you have in mind for us. And we ask this in the name of your matchless son, Jesus. Amen. Doing the business of God. I like that. We're about doing the business of God and a lot of people were doing the business of God here at that field last night and with the search for the Christ child. And, and I guess I, I forgot to welcome those who are visiting with us this morning. We, we are so glad you're with us uh, today. And if you haven't got a glimpse of the search for the Christ child, give it a shot this evening. It starts at 5.30, go to 8. Uh, it's, a, it's an amazing way to start the season of Advent uh, from the beginning to the shepherd and, and to this place. A, it's a wonderful, wonderful experience. So, uh, uh, those are joys of a season, the joys of new beginnings, the, the joys of, of family, friends getting together, and with joys there are many concerns that weigh upon our hearts, and we need to lift those up to God too because we're not strong enough, but God is strong enough. God is, is faithful enough, and, and, and God is uh, powerful enough uh, to not only hear our prayers but respond to them. And, and to, uh, to heal uh, what needs to be healed, and that's a glorious thing. So please note those folks in the prayer list here this morning, and I'd like to add a couple more if I could. Uh, if you could please pray for Joe Peacock, uh, Linda Sidaway, Bethel Robertson, and also Ruth Rung. Lorna Lover's uh, mother was taken to the hospital this morning, and so prayers for, uh, prayers for healing and also prayers for, for wisdom for the docs and and prayers around your family, Joe, too, as uh, you know, I know you'll be leaving from here to go to the hospital. Are there other joys, concerns of the church here this morning? Uh, I just learned by telephone last evening that the wife of one of my first cousins who lives in Virginia her name is Peggy Gray. She has been uh, paralyzed since March with a disease called transverse myelitis. And she, I'm sure, would uh, do well with prayers from our congregation. Prayers for Peggy Gray. Are there others? Let us then go to God in prayer. children praying, Lord, send your spirit in this place, Lord, listen to your children praying, send us hope, send us power, send us grace, Lord God, we need you this morning. We need you to send us your power, your grace, your love, your mercy, your healing presence with us this day. Lord God, we gather here on this first Sunday of Advent as we celebrate you, begin to celebrate the, the birth of our rebirth, the birth of, of our regeneration, the birth of our new beginning, Lord God, and um, guide us along this path that, that we may truly come to know you even more intimately here this, this Christmas and Advent season. 
Lord God, we celebrate so much. We celebrate friends and family. We celebrate all those who helped with the search here last night and, and all those who came, and we pray for, for those who come tonight will be moved uh, closer to you, Lord God. And, um, but we gather today because there's much joy in our heart, joy of, of having you with us, now, even to the end of the age, as you have promised to be with us. Lord, we, we pray for your whole world and your people. We especially pray for those brothers and sisters in the Middle East. We just pray for peace where it seems to, to be a, a distant memory, Lord, in that, in that region of the world. And we pray for our great nation. We pray uh, also for our leaders, our, our, our na national leaders and our and also our community leaders, Lord God, and we pray uh, for our schools and our children and their parents, and we pray for our, our friends, and we do pray for our neighbors, too, those we know, those we don't know, Lord, but you have called us to reach out to them as well, and as we reach out to them, we come to know you even better. Lord God, we pray for those who are traveling, travel blessings upon them. We pray for those who can't be here this day, those who are sick, homebound, hospitalized, uh, those who are recovering from surgeries and those who anticipate surgeries in the, in the weeks to come. Lord, we pray for those who mourn the loss of loved ones, especially this morning we pray for the family and friends of Bill Clark, the family and friends of Dustin, the family and friends of Johnny Grimes, the family and friends of, of John Barra. Lord God, uh, by your Holy Spirit, uh, heal those, those wounds that seem to go so deep when we lose loved ones, Lord, and may the the tears of mourning turn to joy, knowing that the one they have lost is firmly within your grasp. There, there will be a day that all will be rejoined with them and all the other saints who have gone on before them. Lord God, we, we pray for those uh, uh, that we've lifted up to you deep within our hearts. And we also lift up to you Joe and Calvin, Joanne, John and Pam and Ryan, for Joni, for Linda, for Ruth, for Bethel and Wayne, for John and the Marshall family, for Joan and David and Betty, and for all of those who, and for Peggy, we pray for all of those also who surround them in, in, in constant prayer and constant help, Lord, the, the caregivers, Lord God, we pray that they have the strength and the, and the wisdom and, the, and, and what they need to care for the one in need. Lord God, hear our prayers and by your Holy Spirit rest upon each and every one that their bodies may be healed and their faith nourished, that they may go forth in the journey that is before them, knowing that you are with them now, even to the end of the age. Now, Lord God, we pray for each other and for ourselves, that we may be enlivened by your Holy Spirit to continue the good work that you have begun in each and every one of us. These things we pray through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who through his disciples taught us to pray boldly together, our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. I'd like to ask the children to come forward for a children's chat. Come on up here. In fact, you can sit down on the on the hay if you want. Yeah, come on up. You all can fit. Yeah, go ahead and see what happens. Okay. Well, maybe we better not sit on that because there's going to be a baby Jesus laying in there tonight, and we want to make sure it's strong for him. So uh, sit anywhere you want. Uh, there's some space back there. This is this is kind of special, isn't it? You can stand back. What are we What are we celebrating here today? What Who's supposed to be in that manger? Jesus. But there's no Jesus there now, is there? Why not?
That's right, it's when it gets dark, but also uh, this is the first Sunday of Advent, and this is a really, really special time in the church and, and in your, your life and your family and the whole community because, because Advent is a time that we, that we prepare ourselves for the coming of Jesus, that we, that we think about Jesus and we pray about Jesus and, and all the fun stuff. And then Christmas is going to come. What happens at Christmas time? Yeah. Santa comes. What else? Yeah, presents. Yeah. You can give Santa cookies. Or, yeah, ginger snaps are good. Yeah. Milk. Yeah, yeah. Lean and healthy. Yeah. Sure. Jesus' birthday, and so we give presents, and, and, and Santa Claus comes really to, to, to welcome Jesus into the world, and that's why we're here, and, and so God wants us to be, this, this special word, alert, wants us to be alert to Jesus coming, and that, that over the next couple of Sundays, you're going to see different things happening in the church, and then on Christmas Eve, there's going to be wonderful services, because we're going to celebrate Jesus coming into the world, and, and that's what we do, and and that's what the manger's all about, and that's what all the hay is all about. And so it's a fun time. Yeah. What happened to Jesus? Uh, Jesus is on break. No. <laughs> Jesus will be coming tonight. Jesus is sleeping so Jesus can stay up and, 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 and welcome all the people that will be coming in to see him tonight. Okay, let's pray. <laughs> Lord God, thank you for the joy that's up here in your house this morning. And thank you for Jesus. And, and thank you for, for loving us so much that we have so much fun with you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, thanks for coming up here this morning. That's kind of a neat place to be, isn't it? Close to a stable. Some people didn't want to have horses and cows. Lord God, we feel your spirit in here this morning. We pray your blessing uh, by your Holy Spirit that as the scripture is read and your word is proclaimed that we may be filled with high expectation, that we may be filled with joy and the salvation of our souls, Lord. Now, may your word come through me this morning or in spite of me. Thank you, Lord God, for giving us all another opportunity to get your word right. Let the people of God say, Amen. Gospel lesson this morning is from St. Luke's Gospel, the 21st chapter, beginning in the 25th verse. There will be ages in the sun, the moon, and the stars, and on the earth, distress among nations, confused by the roaring of the sea and the waves. People will faint from fear and foreboding of what is coming upon the world, for the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Now when these things begin to take place, stand up, raise your hands because your redemption is drawing near. Then he told them a parable. Look, look at the fig tree and all the trees. As soon as they sprout leaves, you can see for yourselves and know that summer is already near. So also when you see these things taking place, you will know that the kingdom of God is near. Truly I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. Be on your guard so that your hearts may not be weighed down with dissipation and drunkenness and worries of this life. And that day will catch you unexpectedly like a trap, for it will come upon all who live on the face of the earth. Be alert at all times, praying that you may have the strength to escape all these things that will take place and to stand before the Son of Man. 
You know, as I read that chapter and those verses, I couldn't help but think of all the predictions of the world's demise. Right now, December 21st, according to the end of the Mayan calendar, the world as we know it will come to an end. I'm going to keep, I'm keep submitting to my 401k just in case it doesn't happen. But then there's other things that are happening too. I mean, Jesus said, he said that when the waters will start roaring and the waves upon the seas and, and the earth and the moon and all these things will happen. Well, we see these now. We see earthquakes. We see nations against nations. We see people against people. We see anger. We see hunger. We see the, the water rising. In fact, in the news last week, there's, a, there's an article about the, the, the ocean rising. In the next 25 years, it could change the whole landscape. I'm not sure if that's true or not, but gosh, it gets you thinking. And the more I, I, I start thinking about that, then I start thinking about other things, too. What about what's going on in our life? Gosh, we have the fiscal cliff going on. We have uncertain economic times. We have, we have financial hardship. Some of us have uh, a physical ailments. Some have emotional ailments. Some, some people have lost loved ones, or some, some folks are, are terribly, terribly sick. And you think, well, where's God in that mix? Jesus said, though, something very important in this message this morning. He said, be alert. Stand on guard because your redemption has come near. You know, we can sit on a hay bale all day long, and we can think about all the things that might happen to us. The world coming to an end. I want to ask you something. If the world was coming to an end tomorrow, what would you do? What could you do about it anyhow? But what God is saying is, if the world is coming to end tomorrow, let us live like that today. And how we live today will be how we live tomorrow. And how we live our life today is how we will meet God when the end comes. In other words, it's awfully important to live in God's love this day, to do the work of God today, now. This is the hour. Jesus said your redemption has come near. It has. It's not here yet. You know, the manger is still empty. There's no Jesus yet. We all know that when we celebrate uh, Christmas Eve, that's when Jesus is born. But then there's a few years after that. In fact, when Jesus was crucified, the people thought all was lost because he should have come right back. And he didn't do it. And they were worried. You know, we talked about worry a few weeks back, but then Jesus is saying, come on. Don't worry about things you have no control over. If you're going to worry about something, worry about your own salvation. And when you worry about your own salvation, what happens is you start turning to God. Did you know that it is 23 days more of shopping days before Christmas? Did you know that? 23 more days that you can go out and spend all your money. And more money than you have, then you have to pay that off in January. 23 more days. But I was thinking about that 23 days. There's something else, too, that we can think about as Christians. We can say, instead of saying 23 days of shopping, why don't we affirm that there's 23 days of praise and prayer for our salvation until our salvation is born. 23 days of prayer and praise. We start praying and praising God every day. What happens? We start seeing God. We start seeing God in, in places we would never expect God to be seen in. You see, when we worry so much about that other stuff, when we worry so much about the end times, which we can't even uh, do anything about anyhow, in fact, we hear we hear that, well, gosh, it was back a year ago, October, that it was supposed to end, too. Well, that was been delayed. But 
it's, it's awfully arrogant of people to think that they can predict the end times when Jesus said himself in the first chapter of Acts that I have no clue when the world is going to end, only my Father in heaven. If that's the case, why are we worried about that? What God wants us to worry about is what we're doing right now. What we are doing right now in, in, the, in the shadow of the cross. We're people of the resurrection. In fact, if, if there was no resurrection, there would be no reason for us to have this manger scene here. Because all we would be doing was celebrating the birth of another child in poverty, which is not a good thing. But that's all we'd be doing in that day. Everybody was born in the manger or somewhere out in the, out in the middle of nowhere. But the fact that Jesus was raised from the dead, the fact that Jesus came and redeemed us through the cross, we can celebrate the birth of our new beginning. And this is truly a birth of our new beginning. This is the time when we start reflecting about who we are and whose we are. We are children of God first and foremost. There is no question about that. And when we lose focus on that, when we start worrying about other things, so many things take us away from the glory of God. Amen? So many things take us away from what, what God would have us see in the world. Someone told me that, that the miracles of the, of the biblical time are gone. And they've been gone for a long time. I'm not sure what they meant by biblical time. Because in this humble preacher's opinion, we are still in biblical time. The, the, the word of God uh, never ended. It didn't end uh, sometime back when the, when the Gospels were done being written. It continues. God's story continues through uh, throughout every generation and throughout our world. I believe that if we stop thinking about all this other stuff, which is not unimportant, and start thinking about God, then we will see the miracles of God in our life. That we will see the miracles. There are more miracles today than there ever has been in the history of the world. Every moment. Believe me? Yeah. Just look around and see. I always think, gosh, uh, Jesus, had, Jesus had 12 disciples. That's kind of like the, eight, the nine folks over there plus three. That's all Jesus had. In this room, we have more than quadrupled that number. In this room. In the second service. We got another service before this. And throughout the world, there are more disciples of Jesus Christ than there were when Jesus was born, uh, walking on this earth. That is a miracle in and of itself. The miracle of new beginning. The miracles of new birth. The miracles of comfort in the time of our suffering. I was meeting with, the, with my uh, pastor's group last week in Berea, and we were talking about a lot of things, and, and I, and I uh, welcomed all the other churches to our service of remembrance on December 16th at 7 o'clock. And if you've lost loved ones and, and, you're, and, you're, and you really feel the need to come and, uh, and uh, try to get through those days, that would be a good service for you to be at. And, and I, we were talking about that a little bit, and the fellow from Berea said, you know, I was thinking about Christmas, and I was thinking about uh, happiness. And how could people be happy during the Christmas season uh, when they've lost a loved one? And it's very difficult, by the way. It's not an easy thing, uh, and it takes time to get through those, those, those times. But he said, you know, the happiness of the season is the hope that God brings for a new day. The happiness of Christmas is the hope for the new day. That is a miracle, too. The fact that God brings us the hope. And so this morning, uh, God calls us to be alert. To be alert for God's working in our lives. To be alert for, for God's word that comes upon our hearts every once in a while. God is asking us to, to shift directions just a little bit. And we will see the face of God. You know, the kids asked me where Jesus was this morning. Well, the Jesus who was here last night is probably still sleeping, isn't he? Yeah. <laughs> well, the 
Jesus that we celebrate is always there. But the Jesus that we celebrate is the one who calls us to reach out uh, to our neighbor, to love God, love neighbor. When we love our God with all our heart, mind, soul, and strength and love our neighbor, we will see the miracles of God. We will see God working in our lives and the lives of others. We will fully understand this journey that we are on on this Advent season. And so when we open our hearts, we will see God. And guess what? We don't have to see, we don't have to wait until we die to see God. We will see the face of God when our eyes are open to these new beginnings that surround us by day and by night. I wanted to end with this uh, real short poem that seems to touch the heart of the season. I don't know who wrote it, but it's profound. I sought my soul, but my soul I could not see. I sought my God, but my God eluded me. I sought my brother, and I found all three. When we reach out to those in need who are brothers and sisters, we will find God who will know our soul, and we shall be set free. The first Sunday of Advent, as we begin this journey of faith, as we peer into this new beginning that God has set uh, before us here this day, as we do the work of God, by loving God, by praising God, and loving our neighbor, those we like and those we don't like, live our lives today in the hope of what shall be. We will know the gift of everlasting life, which is Jesus Christ our Lord. Lord God, we give you thanks for this gift of life, for this gift of everlasting life. Lord God, we give you thanks for the for opening our eyes to see the reality of our new beginning, the reality of your presence with us, whether in times of joy, whether in times of suffering, whether in times of challenge. Lord God, we give you thanks for, for, uh, for healing our uncertainty, Lord, for calming our sin-sick soul. Bless us and keep us. And as we offer our gifts here this morning, bless and sanctify them as well that they may do your saving work. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Can the ushers please come forward for the morning offering?
celebrate the sacrament of Holy Communion. This is not the table of Fields United Methodist Church, nor the United Methodist Church. This is the table of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And Jesus invites all to this table, all who seek a closer relationship with God and with one another. So we come humbly, acknowledging our our faults and our challenges and and, and falling away from God, and we seek God's forgiveness for that, for as we we come and and eat of this holy food, that we may be blessed and and, uh, uh, beyond measure, that we may do the work of God and see the face of God in our lives. So let us pray. Lord God, we give you thanks for the word that became flesh and dwelt among us. We give you thanks, Lord, for... uh, your Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave us the word that will never die. Lord, on the night in which he gathered with his disciples, he took a loaf of bread, gave thanks to you, blessed it, and broke it, and said, this is my body, which is broken for you. Take and eat. When the supper had ended, he took the cup, Again, giving thanks to you, blessed it, and said, This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Lord, pour out your Holy Spirit on all of us gathered here this day. And on these gifts of bread and wine, make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world. Until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. As the ushers come forward, we'll be taking communion in the pews this morning. So hold on to the bread and and to the wine until all are served.
God, we give you thanks in this mystery of faith. That as we partake of this bread and of this wine, your body and your blood, that we may become one with you and one with each other in ministry to all the world, Lord God. May we go from this place, your table, with your power and your peace. And may we witness that to all the world. In Jesus' name we pray. Really standing and singing out, singing out. Uh, Tom spoke of our Redeemer, and so we're going to sing about it. Our Redeemer lives.